How do you turn your images from being this on the negative to becoming this a print? Guys, this is my overall goal for you. I want your artwork to become prints, prints that people can buy from you, prints that can be framed and hung on a wall, whether it's at a home or a business. I want your artwork to now be a symbolic statement that is decorating the wall of a building. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to scan your images and digitize them, move those files over to your computer to where you have options where you can create prints that you can sell. This is Eclis Surf Film and let's get started. make sure that you are fully equipped with all the resources you need to make this happen. So the first thing you absolutely need is a scanner. This is my scanner. It is the uh, Kodak Scanza. I found it on Amazon um, about March 2020. Thankfully they had it in stock around that time. But the reason why I purchased this, spe this specific scanner is because of its size. It's compact. Um, I'd say it's about five inches tall and it just sits really well um, in storage. I found several scanners online that um, had great ratings. However, a lot of them were flatbed scanners, meaning that they would have to sit on a desk for a while, and I just wanted something that I could store away in a drawer or a cabinet when I wasn't using it. So this is my scanner. It is considered um, a, an amateur or a not professional scanner. However, I've had a great experience using it and I really like it. One of the things that it has here as a feature is you can lift up this uh, screen here and you can see me, hi. <laughs> um, and so uh, the other aspect of it that I really like is if you're someone who shoots on 120 millimeter, there are certain adapters that it comes with. Um, this is the tray that came with mine. This is for 35 millimeter or 135 film. Um, and so you can see where the image will stick right there whenever the light down here is turned on. Um, so I just keep this tray in here all the time. I actually never take it out when between uses. Um, so the other thing that I like about this that I specifically wanted there are some scanners that will connect directly to the computer, um, but those are typically higher quality or more expensive. And so I just wanted something where I could quickly digitize the image. And so one of the things that I liked about it is I could take an SD card that I already had. I didn't have to buy this separately and it just inserts right into the scanner. Okay, so the SD card that I'm using, it is a, a SanDisk, has eight gigs on it. So it, you don't have to have an eight gig SD card, but just make sure the SD card you use will fit inside of the scanner. And then um, right here, there's an HDMI hookup. I've actually never used it just because I found this to be most effective for how I do it using the SD card. And then the USB port right here. So before you get started, you wanna make sure that the uh, scanner is plugged in. I have it plugged into the wall, an outlet and it's just your basic outlet. Okay, so that's plugged in there. Let's go over some of the other things that we need. I'm just gonna move this out of the way for now. Um, so of course you do need the film that you are going to scan. Typically, uh, I when I do this, I just have the entire strip of film. I've already pre-cut this um, because I've, I've scanned these before. Um, but usually I just have the entire strip of film um, whenever I'm scanning. So you don't have to cut it beforehand, it's up to you. I find it a lot easier just to run the whole thing through. Um, another thing you need is a rag. So this is a microfiber towel and it is wet, just damp right here on the edge. The rest of it's dry. And the reason why you want this is because uh, typically you will find some water spots on your film after you uh, develop or after it's dried. And so um, if there's any spots on it and you could usually see there's like little silver spots that'll show up on the film, you just wanna take that damp rag and run it across and get rid of any kind of spots that you see. And then you just wipe it away with the dry side. So that's why I like to keep one of these, uh, like a damp cloth on hand. So whenever I'm scanning the film, 
I don't, if I, especially if I notice the spot showing up on the screen of the scanner, I don't want to keep that on my film. That's just extra work for editing. So I just use this cloth to get rid of any kind of spots. And then the next thing you have, um, this is actually a glass cleaner <laughs> for glasses. And this came with the scanner. It's um, like a little brush, but it's not really a brush. It has this, um, this felt pad right here. And so the purpose of that is to, whenever you turn on your scanner, you wanna see if there's any, um, any dots, any like dust specks, anything that's showing up under the light. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so if you get really close up, and it, it is kind of hard to see on the video, but you can actually see right there is a little dust speck. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but in person you can see all the little dust specks. Like there's a little white dust speck right there that I see right there. And that's the only one that I really notice. Oh, there's a little one right there. Sometimes you have to take a second to really look at it because any of these dust specks that are sitting on the screen, once you run your film through it, it's going to show up on the image and you don't want that. Um, I mean, th this isn't a, it's not a huge deal if sometimes they show up, it's just extra editing for you in the end. So I like to clean this out. So if I notice any dust specks, um, what I like to do is I take out the tray and then I take this um, little felt pad and I slide it into where the light is and you'll see it show up there. And I just wipe away those dust specks. And something else that I've noticed, this felt pad, and this is why I have the glasses cleaner, the felt pad sometimes hangs on to those specks of dust, even from previous scanning. So I do like to wipe it clean in between um, getting the dust specks out of here. I just wanna make sure every little bit is gone that I can see anything that I can get out of there, anything extra. Oh, some of it got left behind. Sometimes that happens, okay. Good deal. So I don't see any other dust specks on there. Another thing that you can do just as a little rule of thumb is you can wipe, uh, wrap this around it if you're not getting all the dust specks out and you can just run that through the inside, kind of get any little bit of dust out of there if you need to. It's a little bit harder though because the scanner isn't totally meant for using the glasses cleaner. It's just use what you have, you know? So, um, that's clean. We're gonna put our tray back into the scanner. I'm gonna check one more time for any dust specks. You never know, this dust will just show up out of nowhere. Okay, everything looks good. All right, so let's get to scanning. So I have my strip of film here. It's ready to go. I wanna make sure that I'm putting it into the scanner on the right edge. So you see the numbers there with the 20, so sometimes you'll see this where it's backwards, and then you know, okay, I wanna flip it, make sure I'm putting it in the right way. Or sometimes it ends up like this, where that's upside down. And uh, usually there's, yep, see, you can see Fuji there. It's kind of hard to see. You can see Fuji upside down, but I know I wanna put it in this way, okay? So you do want to run the smallest number in this direction, and so, um, Technically, by the, by the instructions, they say to take the tray out and put the film in first. However, I'm lazy <laughs> and I just, I found a way to just easily fit the film inside of there without having to take the tray out. Okay, so here we go. There is the first image. It's pretty cool how it, it shows up like that, how it's enlarged just from uh, this light right here. And so what you wanna look for whenever you're scanning is making sure that the tray is fully in place. If it's not, you'll see that white show up. So you wanna click that in place. Sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes you'll see uh, something like this where the image isn't all the way in, or you can see where the overlap, that edge of the next, next image ends and starts. Um, or sometimes you can actually see if you have that tray in the wrong way, you'll see the edge of the film showing up right there. So you just wanna make sure it fits in and you'll know it whenever, if you ever use this, it'll just slide in real easy. Okay, so there is the image and there's a few things you could do here. Um, I like this image the way it is, so I'm just gonna hit capture and it's saving it to the SD card. 
Um, another option you can do here, and I've used this before, is if you want to change the coloring. So if you hit that middle button there, you can see there's an option for brightness, the red, green, and blue. So if you wanna go down the list, um, let's say I want to adjust the brightness, I just select that, I can press forward to give it more brightness or less brightness. <laughs> and you can actually see I had another image uh, double exposed on here that didn't fully show up all the way just because of how I had the settings on the camera. So you can't actually really see that other image until I bring up the brightness. But I just like it right there in the middle, so I'm gonna keep it. If I want to adjust the red color, just go down to red, do the same thing. You can adjust it up and down however you want to your liking. And it's not, you can do some editing on this if you want with the coloring, but I don't rely on it all the time. So here we are back to that image. I've hit capture. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. You just push that image right on through. Another thing you wanna make sure you do is just grabbing the edge of the film here. You don't wanna like manhandle it and get prints all over, your fingerprints all over the image. So I just scoot it in from the edge there. And then here's another image. I like that one, so I'm going to keep it. Just hit capture. Scooting it on and further. And here's another one. Not my favorite, but it is what it is. And But I'll, one of the things that I, I like to do is just keep the image regardless. Um, and the reason why I did this is because there was so many times in the past when I thought I didn't like it and I just captured the image anyways. I transferred it to my computer, put it in my files, and I would just toss it away, right? So then months later, I'm going through my files and I see a picture and I'm thinking, oh, I don't remember posting that or sharing that with people. And I go back and I look at it and I think, I actually really like that. So sometimes, you never know, you always just wanna save the image, even if it looks terrible to you at the moment, just keep it because you never know, it might be a buried treasure that you come across one day and it could be your next print that someone really loves and you could sell it and make some money off of it. Um, so just going on through the line here, here's another image, the next one. I really like that one with the sun, the morning sun glow on that wave. And here is the last image on the film strip. And I'm just gonna take it right out. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how you scan the images to your device. Um, just to recap, you don't need this specific one. I like this one because like I said, how compact it is and easy it is to use. There are several scanners out there that are available that are great. Um, but this one, I, I really liked when I read the reviews on it. I bought it and now it's mine and I love it and I've been using it ever since. Now that your images are on the SD card from your scanner, what you wanna do is remove the SD card from the back of the scanner, making sure you're not scratching the SD card. And finding the port on your computer. I use a laptop. Um, you couldn't have a, uh, a desktop, but you wanna find the port um, for the SD card. My port is sitting here on the left. So you just insert the SD card onto the port. I've inserted your SD card into the port. This page will show up. And I know that on the folder labeled DCIM is where my photos, my images were scanned to. When I click on that, it takes me to this weirdly labeled folder, 139FS. I don't know why it's called this. I've just done it for a while, so I know that this is the folder where my images go. I click on that, and there are the images that I scanned. And so what I want to do is immediately get these images off of the SD card because I like to keep the SD card clear and ready whenever I scan images again for the next time around. I don't want any duplicates. So I will click the first image and click Shift to select all, right click, copy, and then I can move these images to another folder where I like to keep them separate from the SD card. I hope the information in this video was helpful for you learning how to scan your own images so you can eventually get prints to choose from. 
Ecclesur film does exist for the inspiration and connection with others. And so that is my goal is to inspire you to try something new, especially if you've never done this before. I will have a link in the description of the Kodak Scanza if you're interested in looking more into this device. And also please subscribe for more content on film photography. I'm looking to share my knowledge and the information that I've learned over the past few years of being an analog photographer. I'm really excited to share my passions with other people, especially those who are interested in getting into film photography. This is Eglis Film. Thank you for watching.